Okay, let's look again at this um, false positive, false negative test um, example, but let's do it in Excel. So here again um, is the background for the test. Um, in the previous video, I went through all of this uh, and let's go have a look and see how we set this up in Excel. Okay, so here we are. Um, here's kind of a template that I like to use. A little legend, ill means they have the disease, not ill means they do not have the disease. Uh, pause means they test positive for the disease. Neg means they test negative for the disease. Okay, um, so how I'm gonna set it up is the following. Um, the ill is the 0 0.008. Um, that's what I call a singular probability. Um, so there is a mention of you know having disease, uh, testing positive or um, not having disease, testing negative, those conditional ones. Um, the only probability listed that was kind of on its own with no other event attached was the probability of being ill. So that's what I call my singular probability. I list that one first and then I list the complement of it. So one minus that 0 0.08. Beautiful. So odds of having disease 0 0.08. Odds of not, not having disease um, is 0.992. Oh, sorry, I'm just going to bump this down here. So these are the singular probabilities in this line here. Now, what I like to put next is a conditional probability table. So what I was told was the following. I was, or what we were told was that the odds of testing positive, um, given that we have the disease, uh, were the, uh, let's see here. Um, the odds of testing positive, given that we have the disease, were 0 0.97. Forgive me for that. Uh, the odds of negative, given that we um, okay. So the odds of testing positive, given that we have the disease, we were told that before, is 0.97. Um, the odds of testing negative, given that we did not have the disease, were given at 0.98. I'd like to fill them in in the table like this. Notice this is positive or negative, given whether or not they're ill. This is the kind of ordering of the conditions here. So we already know whether or not they're ill. What are the odds of them either testing positive or negative? Those two numbers were given to us in the problem. Now, be so careful where you do the one minuses. Okay, so given that they do have the disease, odds of them testing positive 0.97. So out of that group, how many would then not test positive? Well, one minus that, so the 0 0.03. Now somebody's not ill, given they're not ill. The odds of them testing negative, 98%. So what are the odds of them not testing negative? Ergo testing positive, well, 0 0.02. Be so careful where you put these one minuses. Okay. Now, um, from that, you can get what's called the contingency table. So we did that with the tree as well. We got all of these ands. You can do that by multiplying your conditional by your um, singular. So in this case, first one here, probability of this guy right here, let's just write it out, is the probability of, so this guy right here, is the probability of uh, testing positive, given that they are actually ill, is this one right here. Okay. Let's just color code that in bright yellow for now. Now, in order to get this and right here, okay, what we would do is take this conditional and times it by probability of ill to give us this guy right here, which is the and. So I'm going to uncolor code that, okay. So this right here is the probability of positive given ill, this number right here. When I times it by the odds of ill, which is this guy, I get the and right here, which is the odds of positive and ill, or if you will, of testing positive and having disease. So I take the 0.97 and I times it by the 0 0.008. Now, I always want to either grab ill or not ill, so I want to stay in this row. So I'm going to lock this row number, B5. Okay, and then copy it across and down, and I'm always going to be grabbing either the probability of ill or the probability of not ill for each of them. From there, I can go get my totals. So I can sum up all of the times when the test tests positive. Copy, 
control C, control V that, and I can get all of the times where the test tests negative. These were the two numbers that I found by hand uh, before in the previous video. Now, same here, I can just do my sums. These two should look familiar. Notice that you know you've done things right if you get the same totals as up top here for these two. Um, okay, now, uh, moving on, what we really want is the opposite uh, conditional. So we had given ill, what are the odds of testing positive or negative? What we really want, the test actually comes first, and then we try to diagnose the person. Are they truly ill based off their test result? So to do that, for example, uh, in here, okay, they tested positive. Do they truly have the disease? So we look out of those who tested positive, what are the odds of them having it? So we look at positive and ill and divide that by probability of positive. Um, because given that the test result was positive, what are the odds of them also being ill is what we're getting here in this table. Are they ill given or based off their test result? Now, what we want to do is always divide by one of these two probabilities, either the positive or the negative. So if we want to get fancy here, lock this column, lock column D, and only the D. And then you can copy this down. You can just pull that little tiny green square, click on that, it down and across to autofill and you will get all of your answers here so here are all the conditionals so let's have a look at what they are ill given test positive this guy right here it's going to be that 28.12 percent not ill given test positive that guy the 72 point or 71.88 percent uh ill given negative ill given negative that 0. 0.0002 uh and then not ill given negative 0.99975. So very surprisingly, this one right here, for this medical test, the false positive happens very often. If somebody is not ill, they would have tested positive 72% of the time. Um, or forgive me, if somebody tested positive, they would have not been ill 70, roughly 72% of the time, which is very high. 